Well, what is going on and welcome to today's episode. It is no longer ice fishing season. It is now the middle of May and I'm finally off my ice fishing kick. However, I always have troubles in May because every species seems to be up shallow and I always think, what can I do next? And I've had an idea now for about a year and a half of to do in floatable raft with an ice shack and all sorts of stuff going on to hopefully land a big catfish. And I tried that this week. However, my muscles were just not strong enough. And thankfully I've met Ben down here. Look at those guns. Yeah. And to make him even more impressive, he is actually using a pickerel rig. So that is what I plan to use. Cause if you ever want to catch a fish in rapid succession, it's always use a pickerel rig, even two at a time. And Ben has got stuck on my anchor rope and all sorts of things on my absolute slice of heaven. As you can see, uh, many things can go wrong, but I'm hoping everything goes right. One of the biggest keys of a floatable raft in strong wind like I have here is a very strong anchor, which I do have. Oh my gosh, I, can't e I cannot even lift the anchor while holding the camera. So I'll have to be back with you inside my shack and hopefully on my way to bring you a big catfish through the raft. No way, man. We have got, we've got lift off. I've got strong current behind me, so I need to stay away from the dam. Obviously my, my trolling motor can only go down so far. So that's obviously something that I want to avoid and stay away from this current out here. Oh my goodness. You are seeing this firsthand of what is going on. This is a test run that is hopefully not going to go sour. I got to get outside the shack somehow to get to my anchor. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm finally making progress along the bank. I wish you guys could see. Obviously camera angles are kind of the last thing that I have on my mind right now. I'm trying to look out here. It looks like I'm slowly making headway. Try to just steer myself a little further offshore to set up with the anchor. Obviously having to climb underneath my shack to get out is just totally worst case scenario, but that's pretty much the only option I have. I have moved I don't know, about 30 feet. I'm not sure on my camera angle again. But as you can see, that trolling motor is just going to work. There is outside the lake. That's Ben over there. I should be staying on the trolling motor at all times. Any sort of slip up. Oh, what kind of camera angle do we got here? Raw footage at its finest. My YouTube name might have to be Ryland's raw footage at this rate, but oh my gosh. Okay, my shack is definitely moving now, which is kind of not what I want. I'm gonna keep my motor on and try to get this anchor out of here. Okay. My anchor is in. Let me bring you guys outside. Like I say, I'm gonna climb under the shack because my doors were not strategically placed. Oh, well, welcome to MTV. Welcome to my crib. People say lakefront cabins are just so essential. Um, of course, mine is flooding and screw lakefront because I like to go straight on the lake, as you can see right here. And then of course, if I get cold or it starts raining or get windy, I've got my shack right here. I'm not very far offshore right now, um, but this is the first time I've ever ran this unit. Um, I'm not even sure if it's much of a unit, so I'm just trying to stay safe, of course. We do have wind. I do have Ben over there in the distance somewhere. So if I do need a retreat, and I can also jump in the water here. Uh, oh, get that shack thing out of my mouth. I can jump in the water and drag the shack to shore if needed. It seems like I might actually be drifting to shore still. So I might need to go on the trolling motor while I'm moving, but. Anyway, enough talking, and I will hopefully bring you the first fish through uh, otter raft. Okay, so now that we got our, uh, I don't even know what you could call, 
uh, maiden voyage out to the spot, I want to quickly go over of how comfortable I am. Through the ice, I would always talk about comfortability on the ice, and I don't want to go over too much. However, being comfortable on the ice just goes such a long ways, and I'm really taking advantage of that. Of course, we have got the couch, and the trolling motor, and my windows or doors are in the wrong spot, but as you can see, I can stick my rod out of there pretty easy and get good casting distance and to hopefully bring you a pike, walleye, perch. Our main goal is a catfish. It is still early and I'm not sure if I should really stay in the dark on this uh, unit. However, oh my gosh, excuse me. I will be back and hopefully bring you a big fish. Okay, I always talk about being prepared in the shack on the ice. Of course, there's my shack now, which is not on the ice. And I was ill prepared. I've got GoPros dying. And this chef hat, I do not have a mouse that's teaching me how to cook up here. But what I do have is a safe storage area for an iPhone cord. So this hat has multi purposes, and one of which, if you get a little sucker slime on it, it just works that much better. I'm gonna drop this sucker in, get my cord wrapped up, and I'm game. I'll see you guys back in the chat. So day one did not go as expected. Obviously a lot of moving parts as you could see in the first few clips. I did catch a few fish though, which is really exciting considering that was the first time I've had that thing in live action. Um, but I will jump right into day two to see if I could be clutch. Well, welcome. It is now day two of my raft exploration. I had some really nice young guys that helped me launch this afternoon. So of course I am back in paradise. I do have the trolling motor powering me. Unfortunately, I do not have spot lock, so I have about a 200 pound anchor that is extremely hard to lift and makes it a challenge. Getting back, however, I am here and that's all that matters. So I'm going to set up some camera gear and get straight to business and I'll see you in a bit. So as I said, we do have liftoff and there is a somewhat live look of what this is all about. Of course, I've got that 30 pound truss motor just rolling and then a live look outside, as you can see, making some good progress, got the waves going, and I am moving. Today, unfortunately, I do not have the couch though, which is obviously a big loss, and I'm now spinning in circles, which I obviously do not want to do out here. So I'm going to attempt to go outside and grab the anchor and put the anchor in and begin fishing, because I believe I am probably far enough out. I'm going to turn the trolling motor off and take a live look outside. I'm really spinning, which I don't love, but oh, what is going on here? Obviously, you can't really do any sort of trial and error until you're right in the business. So I'm trying to get to there. I want to fish that current seam. However, I do not want to get sucked down the stream into the dam because that could end in many bad ways for myself. So I'm going to attempt to make it over there and then let you know what I plan to catch. Okay, I was just dealing with cameras. We definitely do have a bite the first part of the day on the pickle rig. As you can see, it is nibbling, nibbling, nibbling. Tighten up the drag. Okay, we are on. I'm hoping you can see me. I need to grab my net, which is behind me. Okay, it looks like it may only be about a 10 inch walleye, which is what I'm trying to avoid. However, a fish is a fish, especially on this raft. I'm going to horse this fish in. And wow, that is quite underwhelming and definitely not the target species unless it is obviously 30 inch plus 30 inch or bust. But that is the first fish of the day, which is a good thing and a good sign for what is hopefully ahead. I actually was able to unhook that fish in uh, quick time. Oh no! Okay, that fish is gone and got a little bit of a better look at that raft than I would have hoped. A little bit of flopping around and obviously I do preach safe fish handling. So try not to do what I just did and hopefully 
That is not how the rest of the day is gonna go. So now that I am set up, I wanna quickly go over a little more serious topic of why I'm actually choosing this spot to fish. It has nothing to do with the fact that I'm on a raft and don't wanna go into the middle of the lake, but more so because there is some major current flowing here. Obviously we got current going into a spillway and I'm just on a big feeding shelf. Obviously in springtime, every sort of species in the lake is gonna find current, shallow water, warmest water. I did have some wind blowing into here, so this is actually a few days after my first attempt. However, as you can see, we've got perfect calm waters, which is ideal rafting weather, of course. So that is what I'm fishing, and hopefully that will actually be proven true in just a little bit. So we are about an hour in now, and I have not caught anything other than a 10 inch walleye. And I have came out to the rod and I have looked and seen those clouds, which seem to be slowly coming my way. So that's obviously a little bit concerning, of course. But like I say, the benefit of having the shack on the raft is that I've got nothing to worry about unless I have four foot waves that sink me and then I may have a problem. Um, but until then, I've got a great safe space to hide from rain and I've got quick and easy access to shore. Oh, and I've got a fish. Maybe that's just me, uh, me tipping the raft. But of course I need to get inside and stop talking and hopefully that storm does not damper my day or anybody else's day enjoying this beautiful day on the water. Will this be the moment we've all been waiting for? I've got some action going on. Okay, I'm on. I am on. It is going crazy, but again, it does not feel too big, which is what we're after. Obviously we're after a big fish and not this. Another, what is that? Please be a giant brown bullhead. I'm really, really hungry. I'm really, really hungry. Oh, is that a huge perch? It is. It is, it is, it is. Oh. Okay. I may have exaggerated a little bit on the huge fish part, but it is a nice quality perch, which I seem to be unable to unhook. Here we are. Benefit of the pickle rig, just two hooks at a time, double the perch. Hopefully we'll have a double. But as you can see, that storm is rumbling behind me. And my one pontoon looks like it may be taking on water, but there is a beautiful perch. I'm gonna short off to this camera, give a quick look. Is it big enough yet? Is it 13 inches? Master dangler. Nice clean release right there. Oh, it just got broke by the trolling motor. No, the trolling motor is not running. The fish is happy, healthy and released. And hopefully I'm gonna expand on this prime time period that is awaiting, uh, awaiting me. Obviously a storm coming in is just prime feeding window. As you can see with that behemoth perch that just really made this video so. So now we have tropical storm Irene that has rolled into the lake, which is obviously not ideal when operating a raft. And of course, I've only got limited days before I go guiding up north to accomplish this video. So hopefully you'll be seeing it if I can salvage it later this afternoon. But this is the things you have to deal with when filming. I just applaud any serious YouTuber who does this for a living because things just go so south. My one pontoon may be taking on water, which of course is not what you wanna have. Luckily, I am now close to shore. So safety precautions I am taking, especially of course in the otter, on the ice, on the water, I guess you could say. Safety is first and foremost. Of course, I do not think I'm gonna have a tornado that's gonna take me out. And I'm just hoping that I stay afloat. Of course, that's kind of the main, the main goal, but I'm gonna tough this out and hopefully bring you some better weather and some big fish. All right, Tropical Storm Irene is now over and we've got some better weather and I've got my friend Colton behind the camera. So that's a big help. And I do have a little bit of nibblage going on on my pickle rig, which I'm hopefully going to bring into the shack. We also lost our anchor, which is a future problem. But for now, we're just trying to enjoy the time and land this fish, hopefully. And I'm not on. Cut the camera. A little bit of an April Fool's joke from this fish. Oh my gosh, this. Don't show my girlfriend that. Anyway, um, I do have a fish, but it feels rather small. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Well, I would say not too big, not too small, just as Montreal, but that is quite smaller than Montreal. That's more of a Grenfell Saskatchewan sized fish, which is rather depressing. But now we must grab the anchor before we get drifted into the dam and perform the Titanic 2.0, which we obviously want to avoid. So we will be back in a few short moments. <laughs> well, one of the things I pride myself in with this channel 
is everything is happening and nothing is staged. Um, unfortunately, I do have this uh, guy in the shack with me. And the first thing he tells me is not, hey, great idea, awesome job. His first thing is, wow, I think you're gonna sink. So instant mood killer with this guy. Uh, although, like I did say, the storm is over, clear skies, but clear skies without an anchor is not very good either. So may have to go for a swim. Whoa! <laughs> oh, step on his rod while I'm at it. We may have to go for a swim and find the anchor. But for now, I'm just gonna enjoy this. So I'm sure most of you have seen the TV series called Mayday. And that's kind of what we're experiencing today. Colton, like I said, has notified me that we are taking on water. And if you cannot tell, we've got lots of clearance here. Like, we're almost as tall as the Eiffel Tower in the back. And then we are in uh, trouble, I guess is the best word to say, in the front. So we're gonna have to take a little TV time out, um, maybe cast some rods from shore, deal with this, and hopefully be back because we are approaching rock bottom, um, especially without an anchor. So things are not good. What do you got to say, Colton? Not much. He's a little camera shy, so it's okay. <laughs> not sure what our visibility is like here. We do have another storm coming in, which my weatherman Colton told me. So thank you there, Colton, for the weather report. And now we still haven't found the anchor. So we're putting our minds together and we've came up with this unit here not him this pole <laughs> with a ratchet strap around it and we're hoping that if we pull it pull it colton give a demonstration that it's not going to slide and leave us stranded out in the middle in the storm so if the idea works it was my idea if the idea doesn't work it's his idea he doesn't agree with that but we are going to try it and meet you back hopefully um still alive <laughs> okay so we are <laughs> we're becoming desperate now for a bite Hopefully this is the bite and the moment we've all been waiting for here. Okay, I can't, you can't see me. Come outside. How do I work this? So as you can see here, we have lots of space outside the shack. So we're always trying to fix things and make things better. And that's one of the things you need to make better. Of course not sinking, but I'm going to hopefully set into a fish. Oh my god, I don't even have it. Oh, okay, you found it? Okay. Come out here, come out here, come out here. Bring that, bring that, bring that. Okay, raw footage 101 here. Oh, bring that, let me have Okay, yeah, just come here. Just come, here. <laughs> come outside. Okay. We do have a fish that feels possibly Moby Dickish. It's a little heavier. And we have not caught anything big all day. This actually feels like a decent fish. <laughs> it's a 16 inch walleye. That's really embarrassing. Um, if that goes to show anything about the size of the fish we've been on, unfortunately, that's not good. But I'm going to land this fish, Colt, and stay in the boat, please. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What do we got here? Boat flip. Alrighty. Let me just get that between my legs. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, we're still filming. No, we're still filming. Yeah, I can see the red dart there. We're still filming. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's really bouncing. Fish. Come here, Colton. Come here, Colton. So if you can't tell, we're really learning about this camera angle thing here. But it's more so just having fun. As Colton has hooked my shack, he will be paying for that $20 <laughs> charge. Um, but we have this fish. Oh my goodness. Why is there no catfish here? You're on, you're on. Come on. You know, it's not ideal having to teach my cameraman how to record. <laughs> oh, I don't have a battery in there. Chris, put the battery in. There's no battery in it. Well, it's recording. Oh, it's oh, yeah. plugged in. Yeah. <laughs> so, little trial and error on the recording <laughs> side of things. However, come look at this view, cameraman. Come out here. You just cannot beat being hooked up in a sunset like this. And what do we got here? Is that a fucking blue marlin? Oh, I shouldn't have sworn. There we have a beautiful eater walleye in the sunset. 
And when I'm talking about having fun on the water, I've got my terrible cameraman here, but we're having a whale of a time. <laughs> <laughs> so we are in evening. Come outside yet again. We are in evening trying. Okay, hold on. Okay, so we are in evening and we've been catching walleyes by the hundreds. And we have been catching so many walleyes. And this is my favorite part about pickle rig fishing that we caught two at a time. Right here, do not snap my jeep on this rod. I, I genuinely thought that that little smaller one, sorry, was a bullhead and I freaked out. So Colton rushed to get the camera. His rod's probably getting pulled in behind us. But there you have it, pickle rig. That's why I fish them. They get a lot of slack. I don't know why, because they're just the greatest thing on earth. Who cares about chicken wraps when you got a pickle rig? Did that flow good? It do, yeah. Okay, thanks. How about that view? <laughs> <laughs> so our evening is over on day two. There may be just a day two, there may be a day three, but as you can see, we should probably just stick to day two as we're sinking. But Colton's gonna lift the anchor quickly. Show us the anchor, Colton. Show us what we've done. It won't come up. This is about a Harry Potter length of a clip. Look at that. Show us your guns. Wow, what a strong man to lift that. So anyway, we did catch probably 100 walleyes in all honesty, but our biggest one was maybe 16 inches. So a little bit of a struggle, and I may be back to go hard in the paint, but if not, I thank you guys all so much for watching, and please do not try this at home.